Oh my gosh, 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 you guys, today was so Wow. Before we get into today's video though, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only, and it's going to be entertaining, okay? Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. <laughs> Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. You guys, today was so, woo, okay, we got some good, good, good stuff. First of all, before we get into all that good stuff, TMZ, y'all, TMZ has filed an emergency motion on the Johnny and Amber trial. Now, why in the world would TMZ go down to the courthouse get them a lawyer, and file an emergency trial about two celebrities that has nothing to do with them. And by the way, before you even get into this, please know that I'm just giving y'all my very unprofessional opinion on very, very, very public topics. Please go do your own research, form your own opinions, and don't show hate to anybody. So, okay, y'all. TMZ went down there and filed a motion to protect whoever gave them that video or sold them that video of Johnny Depp kicking the cabinets and all that. You guys remember, if y'all have been watching my videos, and you know, weeks ago, I told y'all, because I added that clip where Amber recorded Johnny after his mother had passed away, where he was kicking the cabinets in his house and throwing paper around the whole mega pint thing, right? And I had to take out most of it because I got a copyright claim from TMZ. And I'm like, why would TMZ own the rights to this video that is Amber filming Johnny? It's just them two. Well, Johnny wouldn't have sold it to TMZ and Amber is on the stand saying that she didn't sell it to TMZ. Hmm. Now, why is TMZ making an emergency claim to protect the person? Well, if the person isn't in court, there would be no reason to file that claim to protect that person would be what I would suspect. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. When I saw that today, I was like, oh my gosh, tell me you're guilty without telling me that you're guilty, right? Tell on your source without telling on your source. Like, oh my gosh. So today was, oh, so they started rebuttals. It was Johnny Depp's side. Now watch him. Y'all see that? Straight from the floor to the top. There's, there's no keeping him off of it. There's, and I'm afraid he's going to hurt himself. Now, I know he's a cat, and that's what they do, but I'm, I'm still a mother. Okay, so the day started off with Amber Heard resting her case. And this is where Johnny Depp's side, or team, went to try to strike Amber's countersuit. It is not my role to measure the veracity or weight of the evidence. The Fourth Circuit and the Virginia Supreme Court have made it crystal clear that actual malice is a question for the fact finder. So therefore, the plaintiff's motion to strike is denied, okay? And it was denied, which I was not surprised about at all. It seemed like the judge is trying to be very fair. She didn't strike Johnny Depp's, so now she's not going to strike Amber's. And I think this is very fair, and it's probably a really good stance for the judge to take, especially how public this is. Like, let the jury decide on this. So then we went into rebuttals. And honey, when I tell y'all, Johnny's team did not come to play when I tell y'all. These people are so professional and you wouldn't even realize they're professional if you didn't see the other side. Now, what do I mean by this? And so much happened today. I'm only going to tell y'all the stuff that I feel like is really juicy and really good because there is enough of that by itself. When Amber Heard has these like expert witnesses, and I talked about this in the video that you guys saw yesterday, when she has her expert witnesses, it is clear in my opinion that these expert witnesses have some sort of tie to Amber in a way. It's not just an expert that's, you know, 
went off and got an interview or looked at some information, these experts on Amber's side, most of them will argue for Amber, which seems strange to me, okay? But on Johnny's side, all of his experts that he's brought up that I can remember, maybe y'all can remember one that wasn't like this, they are all very professional. Even when it comes to cross-examination, when they are questioned by Amber's side, they keep it together, they know their stuff. It's just like you can just tell the quality on two different sides of this courtroom. Of you know, And you know what? Somebody, in my opinion, got Amber those lawyers. Now, if I just had to guess or pull something, I would say Elon, because as we have seen, Elon has already donated a quite a bit of money on Amber Heard's behalf to these different charities. You guys, we that's just what we know about. It is also rumored online that Elon and Amber froze embryos and you know, to make a baby together. And then when they broke up, the two were arguing over Elon wanted to destroy them and Amber fought to keep them. And that's why there's a huge rumor going around that this little girl that Amber has is actually Elon's daughter, okay? So we know they've got this certain type of relationship. And if I had to think anybody got her these lawyers, I would think it was Elon. And if it was, why? Why did he pick them? Now listen, they may be amazing lawyers. I don't know them. They are probably the most amazing people outside of this courtroom. They got a hard person to defend, okay? I can only imagine what's going on with Amber behind closed doors with her lawyer. She's probably throwing a whole entire fit back there. And they got to basically pull a rabbit out of a hat in order to try to get her to win in front of the whole entire world. So it's not like they have an easy case. But however, when you compare them to Johnny's side, you can tell the difference between these two sets of lawyers. And that also may be because Johnny has so much overwhelming evidence that proves his side that it just looks that way. I don't know. Y'all let me know down below. So the first person that they called that I was super interested in was the CEO or the president of Warner Brothers DC. Now, oh my gosh, you guys. Who in the world would have thought they would have got this guy, his name is Walter H., to come and testify on behalf of Warner Brothers, okay? If you guys aren't following me here, we all know Amber Heard's biggest movie role yet was Aquaman, okay? Where she had the female leading role. She was Aquaman's love interest. Well, Amber sighed, and the lady that was going on and on and on about Amber's career and where Aquaman would have taken her, and she was, you know, did Aquaman too, and da-da-da-da, well, y'all, the CEO came to testify and he said that Amber, it didn't even, they didn't, she didn't have any chemistry with Jason Momoa and they actually thought about replacing her. What, if any, creative concerns did Warner Brothers have about casting Amber Heard as Mira in Aquaman 2? What is the concerns that were brought up uh, at the wrap of the first movie? production of the first movie, which is the issue of chemistry. Did the two have chemistry? Um, you know, I think editorially they were able to, to make that relationship work in the first movie, but there was a concern that it took a lot of effort to get there. And would we be better off recasting, finding someone who had better, more natural chemistry with Jason Momoa uh, and move forward that way? And they said that in Aquaman 2, there was no discussion of her getting more and more money as this other people these other people are saying or that she's claiming. And really it just made it seem like the way that this guy was talking was like they really, you know, they really didn't want to put her in there. And it was like, oh my gosh, just watch this clip. All right, what if anything did Rob Collins say to you about chemistry? What specifically about the chemistry between Amber Heard and Jason Momoa? just the the fact that they didn't really have a lot of chemistry together um you know the, the reality is it's not uncommon on movies for for two leads to not have chemistry and that it's sort of movie magic and editorial the ability to sort of put performances together and with the magic of you know a great score and and how you put the pieces together you can you can fabricate sort of that chemistry um and so i think in in at the end of the day, I think if you watch the movie, they look like they had great chemistry. But I just know that through the course of the post-production that it took a lot of effort to get there. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's very easy. You just put the 
you know, characters on the screen together and they work. And sometimes it's harder. And so. Can you give me anything more specific about what it was with Amber Heard and Jason Momoa that was difficult for the chemistry? No, because it's 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 like what makes a movie star a movie star. Like you 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 know it when you see it, and the chemistry wasn't there. The fact that they got the Warner Brothers CEO of DC to come and testify was like a bombshell. And the fact that you guys know that these petitions that have been circulating around to remove Amber from Aquaman 2 and they're saying that it went down to 10 minutes and Amber even testified to that herself up there. She said that she didn't know how much she was going to be in it. Well, this guy said that it didn't have anything to do with the public. It had nothing to do with Johnny Depp's lawyer's statements. It had nothing to do with Johnny Depp. It had everything to do with Amber. <laughs> Why she's not in the movie very much. But did Warner Brothers at any point in time reduce Ms. Heard's role in Aquaman 2? The role in the film that, the size of the role in the film that she has was determined in the early development of the script, which would have happened in 2018, I would say. She can't blame, and it's just like this woman is really blaming everything on everybody else. Now, is there a part of me deep down inside that wonders if the public outrage did actually have an effect on it? Because it is said that they were scrambling to remove her from the movie because they knew how much it was going to affect Aquaman 2. I do think it's a possibility, okay? I do. However, you don't typically see these kind of people coming and testifying in court and spilling all the beans, right? And that could be a business strategy. I mean, I don't really know. You guys let me know down below. Then it brings you to the next person that they called as a witness. And this expert witness was there to be a rebuttal to Amber's Twitter expert. Now, you guys remember that? Amber brought the expert up that studied the hashtags from Twitter and told the jury and everybody in there that millions of people online are calling her Amber Turd and saying Amber is an abuser and all of that. And it's like, oh my gosh, girl, you're basically telling the jury that the whole world hates her. So, okay. And then, so they brought this man to do a rebuttal and he was just showing how, he was literally showing charts of how Amber it's just not liked. So as you see here on the left uh, are positive Q scores and, and you know the higher the number the better. Uh, as you can see uh, you know Miss Godot uh, has the highest Q score out of the, out of the group of uh, actors here uh, at a 28 uh, but you're gonna notice Miss Heard uh, has the lowest positive Q score. Uh, she has a 9 uh, so I find that um, very interesting that uh, she doesn't appear to fit in as a comparable with these alleged comparable actors. And then on the right side, you're going to see the negative Q scores. So this is uh, how much people dislike you. Um, you know, so the lower the score is better. Uh, you can see Mr. Momoa is over here with the lowest at an 8. But you can see Miss Hurd is over here at a 28, which is, was quite a difference. Uh, you know, a 20 point difference from Mr. Momoa uh, and also a 10 point difference, uh, you know, from the average of all actors. So she is very, very much little, uh, her positive score is very low and her negative score is, is very high, uh, which tells me that she does not fit in as a comparable as it relates to these alleged comparable actors. But what, again, what's important for me is the fact that these scores reflect, you know, who Amber Heard was at the time before the Waldman statements, but after the Aquaman release. It had nothing to do with Johnny Depp's lawyer, Mr. Waldman's statements. It had nothing to do with these hashtags. It just had to do with, she just really didn't stand out and people just didn't really like her. And when you compared her to other actors, she was so far away from like being anything comparable to them. And that is important because her entertainment expert that testified just the day prior said that she was on the trajectory to being big like Zendaya. And these people were coming in, these professionals today, and was like, no, not even close. Again, uh, they are not comparable. Jason Momoa was Aquaman. Uh, Chris Pine was Captain Kirk. Gal Gadot was Wonder Woman. 
Zendaya has been working on Disney Channel since she was 13. Uh, she's in all the Spider-Man movies. She goes by one name. Uh, Anna de Armas, uh, you know, when she was in uh, a movie uh, that they call, uh, you know, her breakout, uh, it was as a, a nude poster. She's been an ensemble piece, Knives Out. These are not comparables. Now, Ms. Arnold stuck to Jason Momoa, who's the most non-comparable because of his history and his career, but she didn't give us the advantage of, of telling us what his contracts were, what he renegotiated to, what he earned. She didn't give us any of those building blocks. She just created, she set him up as a comparable and then said what Ms. Hurd should earn, but she never gave us the salary of Jason Momoa or the other comparables. And uh, she built like this house of cards on nothing. Uh, you know, she showed us the, the, with her words, the beautiful clothing that the emperor was wearing. But, but we could see if you know the business. Yeah, objection, your honor. That he wasn't. Beyond the scope. And I know that this, this actually, I feel kind of mean even saying this because it is kind of mean. It's like, girl, I hate to burst your bubble, but you can't sit up in this courtroom and sue a man for a hundred million dollars and have your experts come in and say that she, she, they said that Amber lost around $45 million due to the stuff going on with Johnny Depp. And then now you have these professionals coming in with actual charts and actual data and actual facts and saying, that's not true. She was never on that trajectory. She was never, doesn't mean she couldn't have been big like that in 10 years from now or whatever, but that's not where she was at. Now, another thing y'all, and we ain't even gotten to the good stuff y'all. We are just chit chatting at this point. The person, the a representative from the hospital that Amber pledged that other $3.5 million to came up and testified, y'all. There was $250,000 donated in Amber's name from allegedly Elon Musk, and that's it. But she pledged all the money. She sat up in that interview and said that she donated every dime of her divorce settlement to these charities to get the public on her side, in my opinion, and then didn't donate it. So she got the divorce settlement in 2018. Where's the money? Where's the money? I mean, we know where the money is, right? But where's the money? And then Amber's response on the stand was, Johnny sued me, but Johnny didn't sue you till 2019. It's just like, now, by the time trial ended today, Johnny Depp's team still has about 10 hours left. Amber's team has about three hours and 55 minutes. That's a pretty big difference, you guys. And then Johnny Depp's team, they stopped early today, which actually cost them 30 minutes of their time, but it's fine. They still have plenty of time and they wanted to stop early. And let me tell you something, when I'm watching Johnny Depp's team, Everything that they're doing is very strategic. It is so obvious. Like what they're doing is they are there to protect their client and hopefully win this, whatever that is, even if it's win a dollar at this point. But, but you can tell that they really care. And you, even when you see Johnny Depp interact with his lawyers, you can see how genuine it is, you know, like they care about him and he cares about them. I don't know, it's just beautiful. Now for my favorite person, oh my gosh. Oh, this is when Johnny Depp and Amber Heard went to this like palace trailer in Hicksville. And this whole situation was, and I don't know if you guys remember, but Amber got up and testified that in 2013, her and a bunch of friends and Johnny Depp went out to this place where they have like all these like really upscale fancy trailers are really, really nice. And outside they have a fire pit and it's in a like, and it's in a secluded area. So they could all go out there and just retreat and take a bunch of laughy drugs and party and hang out or whatever. Now this is the night that Amber said that she was with her friends and one of her friends, who was a female friend, had her arm touching her arm or something like that. Uh, and it was going fine. It was like a, you know, kind of like a party out in the desert um, with a few friends and campfire and music. And um, 
I, I don't know who brought, somebody brought MDMA, um, was being passed around and somebody who, who took it um, kind of was starting to feel the effects of it, I guess is the best way to describe. She kind of reacted in this way where when the MDMA hit her, she kind of, you know, we were sitting around a campfire, all of us, and she kind of just leaned into me and put her, you know, head on my shoulder and kind of grab my arm. I took it, you know, to be the effects of the drug. And as soon as she kind of did this thing where she leaned into me, um, Johnny um, gets really activated. He gets really upset and he starts, well, at first it, it, she thought he was kidding too. I, she thought he was kind of making a joke. I think we all did. Everyone kind of responded at first, you know, that, that it, like it was a joke, but he, he was like, um, hey man, what are you doing? You know, what do you, what do you, what do you think you're doing? And she kind of giggled and kind of leaned into me more. And I knew in my body just instantly that it wasn't a joke, um, but she didn't. So she's kind of still attached to my arm when he says it again to her louder. He says, hey man, you think you're touching my girl? You think you're touching my girl? That's my girl. And he gets louder and louder. And she kind of did this thing half understanding what was going on. I think she kind of started to cry at this point, but she kind of threw up her hands and Johnny grabbed her, her wrist and kind of twisted it and pulled her into him and said, do you know how many pounds of pressure it takes to break a human wrist? Huh? And he kind of held her and she just, she just looked frozen. And then Johnny Depp and Amber went back to the trailer to talk about the incident, okay? And also it is said that Amber was outside crying with her friends and Johnny was so tore up. He was on all these substances and he turned into this other person. And when they went to the trailer, this is where Johnny tore the trailer completely up. I mean, tore it up, was smashing things, breaking things. This is where she also said that he beat her another time. And then this is where Amber gave the story of the cavity search. She said that he ripped her clothes off and forced his hands inside of her looking for his substances, looking for his cocaine and was giving her a cavity search. She talked about him breaking the cabinets inside the trailer and just completely destroying it. Then Amber would testify that she, you know, just after everything was done, all the was done, the SA was done, she went back outside, she saw her friends by the pool, she felt so lonely and that she just went on and put a smile on her face and pretended like nothing happened because she was so embarrassed. An employee from that trailer palace or whatever came to testify in court. He specifically remembers them coming and he said that Johnny Depp was so friendly, outgoing, welcoming, you know, just loving, chatting and everything. And that Amber, at first he didn't think anything, but she just was quiet. She didn't speak to them, which I absolutely believe because we've heard time and time again of Amber like saying like, don't, don't speak to the help per se, you know, so whatever. So we've had other people testify these things. So Mr. Knight said that she didn't speak. She was just standoffish. He saw them drinking cups. He didn't really know exactly what was in it. He said he saw alcohol, but he wasn't watching people pour their drinks. And then Johnny started talking to some of his friends and the employees or whatever there about music and artsy stuff. And they were having a good time interacting with Johnny Depp. And the next thing you know, Amber came over and put herself in the middle and she was mad at Johnny Depp because he wasn't giving her enough attention. There's another instance where Mr. Depp, the innkeeper, her name is Jenna, and myself were talking about books and music and Miss Heard came over and kind of interjected. She seemed a little annoyed that um, Mr. Depp wasn't spending time with her. And you guys, I just have to believe this because we've heard these recordings, right? Like, and, and we know that the, the personality traits that she has been diagnosed. Again, Amber doesn't represent everybody in those categories, but even Dr. Curry testified for her needing to be the center of attention, for her needing the admiration, for her needing these things all the time. And now here's this guy from this trailer park palace testifying that this is exactly what happened. And then he said, after Amber started yelling at him, and it was crazy because he let a couple things slip. 
Listen to this. I was speaking with Mr. Depp uh, just one-on-one -on -one, talking about Hicksville and um, Ms. Hurd uh, came over and she said that I want to talk to you and seemed really upset about something. She started yelling at him and I, I didn't want to hear it. It honestly was really triggering because I've been in a emotionally abusive Objection. relationship before. Objections. Move to strike. She seemed, I think when she was angry at him, it, it seemed like she was intoxicated, but that's just based on my experience and my own personal trauma dealing with abuse. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, move to strike. He obviously was triggered by the way that Amber was talking to Johnny Depp in front of him and the other people there. And Amber's side was, objection, objection. They was, oh my gosh, they were scrambling. They were sitting there sweating. <laughs> and then he testified that Johnny Depp became very, like, withdrawn. If you could just explain to the jury um, what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having an argument. Okay. Um, he was kind of cowering and seemed almost afraid. And then this is the kicker, you guys. They asked him what this trailer was like, the one that Johnny Depp and Amber stayed in after they left. The innkeepers let me know that there was some damage in one of the trailers and it happened to be Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer. So I wanted to inspect the uh, trailer. I observed that um, there was a light sconce by the bathroom um, in the bedroom that had been broken off the wall and a couple pieces were on the floor and they were um, and yeah it was basically just broken. The light fixture was hanging on the wall still except for the pieces that were on the floor. Honest I was relieved because it was not a big deal. I just tucked there was already another light in the room, so I just tucked the wires in the wall until I had a few months later time to um, buy it was matching sconce with another one in the room. So I had to on eBay find a matching pair that would fit there and uh, when I finally got around to it, I was able to get that and charge it to uh, Nathan who had whose credit card I had. And what was your understanding of who Nathan was? Mr. Depp's assistant. Okay. Oh, Amber was just smiling. Like, I don't know what, like, what is she smile? Why, why is she smiling? And when I watched her smiling, I thought, I was texting my friend. I was like, oh my gosh, do they have something else up their sleeve? Do they have some photos of something? Like, why is she smiling? But all they had in cross-examination was trying to make this guy seem like he was a huge Johnny Depp fan and that's why he was doing this or that he wanted to get on national television. And the guy's like, no, I'm just telling the truth. I am happy to come here and tell the truth. I'm telling you exactly what I saw. They tried to be bring up a tweet that he, he did, like I guess years ago, where he shared somebody else's tweet on Twitter and then said, this did not happen. It was basically something to do with Amber accusing Johnny. This did not happen. I saw it. I was there. And really their cross-examination sucked, but it was so crazy because it completely destroyed Amber's story of him doing this cavity search and him tearing up this trailer, which if he would have, I would not have been surprised because he's admitted to that. But it's just like all of these things that Amber is saying happen in all of these stories, they're falling apart. The only real substantial evidence that Amber has to somebody that does not know all the extra stuff that we know out here is her friends that were testifying for her, okay? And only one of them even had the guts to go as far to say that they witnessed Johnny Depp hitting Amber. And with that being said, she done changed her story so many times. I don't understand how they're going to win this. Now, I don't know if Johnny Depp's going to win his $50 million, but I definitely cannot see how Amber is going to win this at this point. And it's just like, why? Why did she have to go this far? Why did she have to do this? And I know a lot of y'all are saying down below in the comment section that you really, you really hate this because of the way it makes, you know, victims look or female. But listen, we do need to believe victims, but before we tear the other person up, 
We need to see more evidence and proof. You can absolutely believe and support somebody without hurting the other person. See, I think that's where the difference is with all of this. And a lot of you guys that are talking about Amber getting all this hate, some of, I think a lot of people are forgetting that Johnny Depp was canceled first. Like Johnny Depp was canceled this whole time. This is Johnny Depp actually, this is his time defending himself. This is him getting what he claims is his story out. Jennifer Howell testified or her testimony was played and it was very underwhelming. You can tell that there was a lot of stuff that they did not allow in. But if there's one thing that I know by watching this trial, Johnny Depp's side knows what they're doing so we will see so what do you guys think do you think johnny depp is going to win this do you think it's too early to speak both sides have two hours of closing arguments what do you guys think let me know in the comment section down below there's still two more days of rebuttal oh my gosh i'm so excited ah! and then closing arguments and then we will find out who wins this thing let me know what you guys think down below thanks for watching love you guys bye we are, we are dreaming in